Hey everyone, it's Julie from Sprouts and Stems. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to grow a gorgeous Monstera adansonii, or as some people call it, the Swiss cheese plant. So let's get started. Monstera adansonii are really easy to care for and make great beginner plants. They're especially a nice option if you love other vining plants such as the pothos or philodendron, but want to spice things up a little bit. Monsteras are called Swiss cheese plants because of the signature fenestrations, or holes in the leaves, giving them a Swiss cheese-like appearance. Scientists do have a few theories as to why these exist, and you can learn more about that in my blog post linked in the description. Monstera adansonii's prefer bright and direct light, but they can survive in moderate or low light. And this is what makes, or at least part of what makes, monsteras so easy to care for. Just keep in mind, if you're growing like a really small baby plant in low light, it might have some trouble growing and developing fenestrations. But if your plant is well established, it should be fine. Now mine receives, I'd say, about a moderate amount of light because it's not by a window, but it is right next to my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, so the grow lights in there help supplement some of the light. So for watering this plant, I can't tell you water every four days or water once a week. It really all depends on your specific situation and ultimately you shouldn't be watering on a schedule. You should just be watering when your plant needs it. So I actually water this plant and all my plants a lot because my apartment is so dry and it also, if I haven't shown it already, you'll see it at some point in this video. My Monstera sits literally directly under a vent, and especially in the summertime now, or as we're getting into the summer, it constantly has air blowing on it, and it's just constantly dry, so I water this plant a lot. Now, this plant does not like to totally dry out. It likes to remain somewhat moist, but not soaking wet, so a good rule of thumb is to water it when you feel like the top inch or so of the potting mix is dry. And some things that can help you figure that out is one, just first of all, feel the soil. If it feels super dry, then it's time to water. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, the general humidity level in your home, mine is very low, so this dries out faster. Uh, let's see what else. The weight of the pot is another thing that people don't necessarily always think about, but after you have your plant for a little while, you'll get to know like the feel of it when it's watered versus when it's dry. And when it's totally dry, it'll just feel like super light. And then also just keep in mind if you have your plant in a terracotta pot, that will dry out faster because terracotta is clay and it's porous versus a plastic pot you'll probably have to water a little less frequently because it'll stay wet for longer and at the end of the day if you do overwater this plant you'll probably get a couple of yellow leaves but it's honestly not a huge deal this plant will recover from an overwatering session just don't make it a habit Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention for watering, another way to tell if your plant needs to be watered is just if it looks droopy overall, if the leaves and stems aren't as perky as they normally are. So if that's the case, then your plant probably needs to be watered. Monsteras are native to tropical environments, so they will appreciate higher humidity. However, this is also not a plant that's going to die on you if the humidity isn't exactly right. You might notice a few crispy spots on my plant, and I'm assuming that's because of the dry air and the vent that it sits constantly underneath. So don't worry about small little crispy parts like that. Overall, just make sure your watering is correct and your plant should be happy. When it comes to potting mix, a well-draining, just regular houseplant potting mix will do just fine for the Monstera adansonii. 
I always throw in a few additional handfuls of perlite. Well, additional handfuls, how much it depends on the size of the pot. I always throw that in just to help improve drainage, but you don't even need to do that if you don't have perlite on hand. And I know the well draining part might sound confusing because this plant doesn't like to totally dry out, but this just means that the plant will not stay sopping wet. The majority of the water will drain out to the bottom of the pot and the potting mix will just remain nice and lightly moist until the next time you water. Now this plant doesn't really require fertilizer, but using some can definitely give it a nice little boost and help it thrive. So currently I'm not fertilizing mine because it already has a slow release fertilizer in it and that's what those little green balls in the soil are. If you can see those, usually the store or garden center, wherever you got your plant from, will have that in it already. Now, if I was fertilizing my plant, I would just be using a general houseplant fertilizer. Uh, you don't really need to use anything special. I just use a general balance fertilizer for all of my houseplants. And I would be fertilizing this plant about once a month during the spring and summer. By the way, you can find that fertilizer and anything else that I mentioned in this video today in the blog post that is linked in the description. In general, repot your Monstera adansonii every one to two years. They are relatively fast growers, so just keep an eye on how it's doing. They don't like to be left to get really root bound, so if it looks like the growth is stunted, or if there's roots coming out of the bottom of the pot, or if it just looks like your plant is getting way too big for the current pot, then it's probably time to move it to a new home. And I did kill a little Monstera once because I waited way too long to repot it, and it got mad at me and slowly lost every single leaf, so definitely they can handle a little bit of root boundness, but definitely don't leave them to get insanely root bound. And a good general rule of thumb is to just use a pot that's the next size up from its current pot and also make sure your pot has a drainage hole. And now it's time for what I think is one of the most fun parts of Monstera Adansoni I Care, training your Monstera to climb. So. People do this because in the wild, these plants do climb naturally. They use their aerial roots to latch onto and climb up trees. So you don't necessarily have to train your plant to climb. It'll grow just fine hanging down from a pot, but allowing them to do what they naturally would do will make them happier, leading to healthier growth. If you'd like to train your plant to climb, you can use a moss pole and just loosely tie the vines to the pole. So you do want the vine to have contact with the pole. You don't want it too loose, but you also don't want to cut off the vine by tying it too tight. So loosely tie the vines to the pole and eventually the aerial roots will train themselves to latch onto the pole and that's it, your plant will start climbing up the pole on its own. Now the plant in this video is not on a moss pole because it's already huge and it's used to growing in this manner. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> it's doing perfectly fine putting out tons of new growth, so I'm not going to change that by attempting to train it to grow on a moss pole. However, you can find an example of a little monstera I used to have climbing up a moss pole in the blog post that's linked in the description. One last thing I wanted to mention is that monsteras are toxic to our furry friends, so just use caution if you have pets, but honestly, I feel that you should be keeping all plants away from pets just because you never know and even if a plant is considered non-toxic, it can still have some negative effects if your pet ingests it, like 
tummy aches, for example, I've actually had a personal experience with that with one of my cats. So, yep, it's toxic to pets, so just use caution if you have pets. That about covers everything you need to know for easy Monstera adansonii or Swiss cheese plant care. I do also have a video that's all about how to propagate and how to prune the Monstera adansonii and other similar vining houseplants. So it's called Easy Houseplant Propagation, the one key to success. And I'll link to that in the description as well. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It would really help my new channel grow and I'd so appreciate it. And leave me a comment if you have any questions. Be sure to check out the blog post in the description for an even more thorough care guide with all the juicy details, plus links to all the supplies I mentioned in this video, as well as where you can purchase a Monstera adansonii to add to your collection. Thanks so much for watching everyone and have a great day.